we've had multiple people, I can think of people by name who um, got done with their training. Hey, you guys, I don't have a job yet. We say, keep, keep working at it a month later. Hey, you guys, getting a little nervous here. Finally gets that first appointment and then we get a call a year later. Wow, I haven't stopped working since, since two months in and you know, making six figures. And it's pretty amazing. It's pretty life-changing for a lot of people. I mean, literally sometimes people don't have two nickels to rub together when they first, when they first take their licensing course and it changes their life. This is not an easy business. On the surface, it would seem like all a person has to do is get a license and an Xactimate subscription and show up to a cat site and they'll be making money hand over fist. But the reality is this. It takes a special kind of person to be really, really good at this work. It's a mindset as much as it is a skill set. The good news is, is that I believe that most people can adopt that mindset and build great careers as claims professionals. So let's talk about it, starting now. You're watching The Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. Get the free guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by the IA firm CCMS and Associates. To apply to this fast-growing and innovative firm, email your resume and a compelling cover letter to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. It really is one of the biggest things you can do to help Adjuster TV. I have talked with people in the industry who don't share my view that things like time management, single tasking, and a no-quit work ethic can be taught. But the main reason I have this view is because when I was younger, if you told me that I could make $100,000 in a year, but I would have to work 16 hours a day, seven days a week for six, seven, eight months, I would have said no, not on your life. In fact, I, I did say no at first. That doesn't sound like, this job doesn't sound like any fun, right? I've got a degree in broadcasting and I'm entitled to an interesting and creative career where I can make a difference. But I shouldn't have to work more than eight hours a day, which to be clear, Radio and TV jobs have lots of long hours and the pay is usually not that good. But over time, I began to recognize the value of tireless, joyful effort and smart effort. You see, the, the greatest thing about a career, which is really a lifestyle, like independent claims, is that because we get paid by the closed claim and not by the hour, is that I can change my income by working differently. Harder, yes, but also smarter. And I don't believe the maxim, work smarter, not harder. I don't believe that a person can get exceptional results for themselves without working both as hard as possible and as smart as possible. Why? Because working smarter allows me to work harder. If I can get more quality work done in a 16 hour workday because I'm being smart about it, then that is gonna show up not only in my next paycheck, but in my annual income, okay? And there are many ways to be smarter about how you work and what you do to advance your career. Coming up, you'll hear from Dave Kay, president of the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters and founder of 2021training.com, who talks about some of the benefits of being an independent adjuster and how being a problem solver is a great way to bring value to the claims process. But first, are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Let me tell you about my friends over at CCMS and Associates. CCMS has been called a big mom and pops firm because they care about their adjusters. They also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team. If you would like to become a part of the family, email your resume and cover letter directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. What role do we serve in the industry? So the carriers have adjusters. So as a, a licensed adjuster with, with your experience, you could go be a carrier adjuster, or you can choose to be independent. Independent is kind of that flexible work staff that you know when, when they don't have enough local people to come into the marketplace, they, they bring people in. That's us. We, we get to travel the world in the, in the United States and see places that you've never seen before, interact with the local people. It, it, it's... I think it's a lot of fun, really. I mean, just getting around and seeing people in the place where they live. And, and what's best is 99% of the time, you're the guy coming in to make things better. That, that's what your job is. You know, they, they just had a tornado rip through their town. I, I grew up in a little town of 2,000 people. When I was 14 years old, there's a tornado came, ripped through half our town. We had adjusters come to our town and, you know, what, what's their job is assess the damage, figure out how to put our lives back together. That's what they did. 
And that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be big or small, you could be running small claims where, you know, hey, the guy had a power outage and he lost two freezers full of crab legs and steaks that he was, used to party all summer with his neighbors. Did it really bother his life? Not so much, but at the same time, was he happy to see me come by and write him a check for all his, his crab legs and steaks that he was missing out on? You know what? He high-fived me and we walked away and he was a happy person. I got to be a part of that. And that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when you're catastrophe adjusters. Not all stories are happy, some are sad, and you know, you, you gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad and walk through it. But at the end of the day, we enjoy helping people and doing what we do. Coupled with that then is we wanna be good at what we do. Is it okay that you go out and, and adjust a claim and you just kind of know your stuff and you, well, this is what I think needs to happen. So we're gonna, we're gonna write this up and then if it's different, let me know. Or would you rather be the guy that walks out and says, I know exactly what that is. Here, here's the best way to go about this and I can get you taken care of. We wanna be that guy, right? We, we want to be the guy that comes in and says, I got this, this is no problem. So NACA serves a role in allowing you, if you have the initiative, to become that guy. Next, some folks from the experienced leadership team of the IA firm CCMS and Associates talk about how to level up your career. But first, as insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you gonna do when something goes wrong? Just Kaplik it. CPLIC, or Kaplik for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. I've seen a lot of resumes where all I've done on my resume is been a catastrophe adjuster only. I've only done cat claims and that's all I want to do is cat claims. It, it's, it's interesting to look at that same person who for the same number of years, six years say, also did cat claims but you can see on the resume where they became exact level training and stability training and they also started their AIC or they went to different levels of training and um, then they started working in different types of claims. And you can see that on the resume. And you, that's important, the resume speaks about you know, what you've accomplished. So if I'm looking at a resume with someone who's been doing CAT only for six years and someone who's starting to train getting certifications, you can see they're really trying, and this particular person that does CAT didn't do any of that. Well, I'm more interested in the person who's continual learning, right? And, and I think that person has enough curiosity, they might want to learn condos, they might want to learn different things. So that's really, um, it's exciting to see someone who's doing that for that long that's willing to continue to learn. We, we, we look for that. When we're involved at looking new people, and one of their descriptions is, you know, excellent customer service. Well, that's kind of expected. That's kind of one of those intangibles that we're talking about is, is the ability to communicate. Everybody communicates differently. And that's, a, that's, that's one of the big things that we focus on is the way people communicate. I communicate in bullet points and I want to hear things directly. You need something from me? Tell me, don't beat around the bush. Cause uh, I get hints, but you know, I'm not gonna really act on them. You tell me what you need, bullet points. Hey Hernando, I need, I need some training on this piece of software. Hey Hernando, I might not know how to exactly handle this problem situation. Well, let's, let's talk about it and let's, let's learn from it. Some insureds need a little bit more handholding. They're, maybe they're shy or they're, they're not bullet point people. They need a little bit more nurturing. They need someone softer to kind of explain to them, just, just easier. And then you have the ex-Marine who wants the bullet points. And then you have the grandma who really needs it softly and, and just a little bit more detail, a little bit more time, a little bit more massaging the information to her so she's able to comprehend what's going on. So you have to have an understanding on how people communicate. Because if you don't know how to people communicate and you go barging into someone's house, they're gonna be put off right away. Or if you're too soft and the insured might need bullet points, I need information, and you're just kind of lollygagging around, you're gonna have problems there too. So it's very important for, for the independent professional to understand 
communication as part of that customer service and how the insured or the carrier or the um, IA company you're working for, the firm you're working for, how to have them better understand you and how you are better to understand them. And it really boils down to how they communicate. Pay attention. Open your eyes, look around. You walk, you walk, you, you drive up to the insured, you walk up to the door, you see all their shoes in the front. It might be religious, it might be a cleansiness thing. We don't, you don't know. So what do you do? Take your shoes off, put booties on, respect that. You, you know right away that they have something uh, that, that they don't want shoes in their home. Recognize that. Or you might recognize the garage. You walk in there and it's a spotless garage and they have a perfectly brand new 1980 Fiero in there that they've <laughs> 20,000 miles. <laughs> well, that's fine. Stay away from it, <laughs> right? Find out how they communicate. And that way you're better able to communicate with them. And, and I, tell, I tell adjusters all the time who are especially coming into the DRT world because it is, at that point, things have escalated. This isn't a new claim anymore. This isn't, I have a public adjuster. This is, I have been through many, 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 many steps through the claims process and now we're here and we're, we're coming to an ultimatum. Is, you know, when you get there, they think you have two horns and a tail. You have to convince them otherwise. And by being polite and by being considerate, and you know, I, go, I know I'm going back to it, but empathy, it's a big thing. If people perceive that you do truly care about their problem and you want to resolve it, which you should, then they're going to, they're going to engage you. They're going to speak to you. They're going to be respectful to you. Now, conversely, there are some situations that you get into, again, not just dispute resolution, any claim, or you get out there and people are stacked against you and they, they're unreasonable and they don't want to find common ground. They want to be combative. Those are very challenging situations, but in those types of situations, you have to keep your eye focused on the main thing. What is your, what is your goal to be there? Your goal is to document that lost site completely. Damaged, undamaged, everything. Because in those situations in particular, this may be the only opportunity that we have to have somebody out there to look at the damage, to address these questions. I've had situations in my past where you'll have somebody come up and they're, they're very aggressive with you. Oh, you need to look at this, you need to look at that. You also have to be firm sometimes and tell them, look, I will be more than happy to review my scope notes and everything I've done today with you, but you have to give me the opportunity to you know, do my thing and let me let me inspect this property. If I have a question, I will come and ask you. Um, and that can be challenging too, because you know it's, it's a it's a distraction technique to try and draw your focus away. And you, know, you have to stay focused. That's very important. You you know what you're there to do. Accomplish accomplish that goal. So if I have two resumes, both of them have no experience, but one of them tells me they've been shadowing a senior 15 year adjuster for six months. Absolutely. You just picked up so much experience in that six months and you didn't actually handle the claims. I think that's huge. Finally, here's Melissa Britton, CEO of Adjuster Pro, to talk about how to make the best of a cyclical industry. So there, there are always ways that the industry is evolving. For a long time, Cat Adjuster was the direction to go with, with pretty much everyone who wanted to be an adjuster. Uh, carriers started opening call centers and, and all of a sudden, Lots of adjusters were moving to the call center model, needing to get multiple licenses. If you're sitting in a call center, you can actually handle claims from all over the nation. You don't have to be on location. And so it, it really built this, this need for a lot of different licenses. Um, a lot of times what happens is those become cyclical. So you have a situation where a lot of people are, are flooding into these call center situations, working for carriers, working for IA firms that are opening up call centers to service the carriers that they service. And, and the catastrophe side of things gets a little neglected. And then a huge hurricane happens. And what happens? We need catastrophe adjust adjusters. So folks start working really hard, get their license as quickly as possible. So IA firms can fill all their deployments, um, which inevitably are going to just skyrocket during during hurricane situations or catastrophe situations. Sometimes there's plenty of adjusters to handle that type of stuff, but what's been happening because of these call centers is it, it leaves that gap when there are catastrophes. So 
we've had a, a slew of fairly recent hurricanes since 2017, and it's kind of tipped the scale back towards catastrophe adjusters where we were heavy on cat adjusters for a while, maybe a little bit more shy on the daily adjuster side. And now we've gone back the other direction. So currently we have a situation where a lot of people are working in call centers. We have adjusters who are handling daily claims. We have IA firms that are reporting to us that all of their current roster is, is being utilized on just daily claims. And we're heading into right now, for instance, a hurricane season. So what does that mean? It means there's gonna be a huge need for catastrophe adjusters again. And so even though the, the nuances of what's needed in a particular season changes a little bit, there's always a need for adjusters. And, and that's one, I guess, nice thing for folks who are considering it as a career. There's always gonna be a place. That, that, that place may change over the years. Maybe you do a CAD and then you settle into dailies. Maybe you start with dailies or a call center and that evolves, and that evolves into a catastrophe situation. But there's always adjusting work out there. Does it mean it's easy? It doesn't mean it's easy. It's, it's, it's something that you really have to work hard at. You gotta get your license, you have to be focused. It's not a, oh, I have my license, put your hand out and, and now, I'm gonna, now I'm just gonna head off to work. You need to put in your time. We have resources on our site, um, adjusting firms that you can sign up with, hundreds of them. Where, and we recommend get your name on as many rosters as you can. When you get your first, that first deployment or get those first claims, always say yes. Make sure that you go, you do them really well. One's gonna lead to two, two's gonna lead to 10, 10's gonna lead to a thousand, really. You know, if you can just do it, if you can just handle those really well, be prepared when you get that first, that first deployment, that first call, keep, keep getting your name out there, be diligent about it, don't get discouraged, call us if you need a pep talk, you know, all those things that, that if you just put in the time, you can be successful in this industry. I, I can, we've had, we've had multiple people, I can think of people by name who um, got done with their training. Hey, you guys, I don't have a job yet. We say, keep, keep working at it a month later. Hey, you guys, getting a little nervous here. Finally gets that first appointment and then we get a call a year later. Wow, I haven't stopped working since, since two months in and you know, making six figures. And it's pretty amazing. It's pretty life-changing for a lot of people. I mean, literally sometimes people don't have two nickels to rub together when they first, when they first take their licensing course and it changes their life. It's not easy work, but it's, it is work that can be very fruitful and, and very fulfilling if you just put the time in and, and the energy. And the great thing is it's, it's fulfilling from a financial perspective, obviously, but it's also fulfilling because you're helping people. You know, no matter whether you're working in a claim center or on a cat situation or um, working daily claims, you're helping people get back to them something that they lost, you know, or at least make right um, financially for something that they lost, rebuilding their home, you know, that they may have lost in a fire or a flood. And so it's, it's just something that's, that's not just work that benefits your pocketbook, but really, really is fulfilling from a... Um, giving back to the world kind of standpoint. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love riding along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself, Chris Stanley from IA Path, Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School, and others show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know that it's hard to find a working adjuster who has the time to let you shadow them, which is why we let you ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at Adjuster TV Plus. Adjuster TV is a premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date, and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims, a career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to AdjusterTV.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.